Good morning, New Jerusalem. We have come into this house to gather in his name to worship him. We have come into this house to gather in his name to worship him. Come. So forget about yourself. Concentrate on him. Concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself. Forget about Concentrate on him. Worship. So forget about yourself. So forget about. Concentrate on Him. Concentrate on Him and worship Christ. Lift up holy hands. Lift, lift up holy hands and magnify. Lift up holy hands. worship him today. worship him. We have come. We have come into this house. 
together in his name and worship and worship we have come we Worship him, worship him, worship him, Christ. We come to worship, we come to worship, worship him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us magnify him today. We worship him today. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath, praise. If you're breathing right now, let's praise the Lord. If he's been good to you, let's praise the Lord. If you turn things around in your life, let's praise the Lord. If you lift your head this morning, praise the Lord. If you got breath in your body, let's praise the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Now we have our, our deacons. Amen. Let me go on and say something real quick. My name is Green, Deacon Green. And I just want to say thank you and God bless every one of you for all of the cards, the prayers, <coughs> and your concerns. And um, my wife should, would say I probably shouldn't be up here. But, you know, if, if I miss coming to church, fellowshipping, and having an opportunity to be with fellow saints. That's all there is to it. And I thank God for it because we do serve a good God. You know, um, going through any kind of surgery is, is yeah. tough, but you know, it was even tougher for me because every time I went into a doctor's office, they said Mrs. Green. They were looking for Mrs. Green because they, anybody who has breast cancer, I guess they figure that it should be a woman. So I've been humiliated for the last three weeks, you know, with people calling me Mrs. But, but God is a good God. He's not through with me yet. He's not through with me yet. You know, there might be some additional treatment that's needed, but, you know, by the grace of God, that too shall pass. And I'll go through that. And I love each and every one of you, and I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. We're glad to have our deacon back. Church don't seem right when somebody's missing. So make sure you come to church every time you can, because we're going to miss you. But well, I'm going to read to you this morning Psalms 19. And it says, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter his speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them 
has he set a tabernacle for the son, which is as the bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. Yeah. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statute of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the words of my mouth Hallelujah. Be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let's praise the Lord. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy. In the morning, praise oh, oh, praise oh, 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 Jesus, blessed Savior. Savior, 
you're worthy to me, you're worthy to. We can change the words and say Savior. Savior, Savior. Oh. Ooh. Savior. Oh. Blessed Savior. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory, glory, oh Lord, glory, glory in all things, in all things. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father God, and we're going to look to you because we know I have come from you. So let us look to the Lord. Mm. Father God, we come thanking you for another day that we haven't seen before, Lord God. And we thank you, oh God, for waking us up this morning. We thank you, O oh God, for waking up with the movement of our limb, O oh God. Father God, we do thank you for what you do in our lives, Lord God. We thank you, O oh God, for keeping us, Lord, because, Father God, we know there is no other, Lord. We know, Father God, we can look from you, look to you, God, because we know, O oh God, all I have come from you. So, Father God, we say thank you, and we praise you, God. We just give you glory. Father, you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. So, Father God, help us to praise you each and every day, Lord. Every minute, Father God, you are worthy. So, Lord God, we say thank you, and we praise you, God. And then, God, we just thank you for all that you do in our lives, God. We thank you for the healing, Lord. You thank you. We just thank you, God, because you're so worthy, Lord. We just praise you, Lord. And we pray for each and every one sitting in these pew this morning, Lord. Father God, we pray, oh God, that you would keep us and, and just open up our minds so we can hear what that's, you have to say for us this morning, God. Just open our hearts and our mind, Lord, to your word. So, Father God, we do thank you and we do praise you, God. And we ask, oh God, that you would be with our pastor as he bring the word to us this morning, Lord. We pray, God, yes. that whatever he says, God, that we could keep it all week, God. It was something to keep us the rest of the week, God. So, Father God, we just want to say thank you. And we just want to lift you up right now in the name of Jesus. We say thank you, Father. Thank you. And we thank you for healing, your healing powers in our lives, Lord. We just thank you, God. Because, Father, we say thank you for each and every one of us, Lord. And we know, God, we know, Father, whatever we ask in your son, Jesus' name, we know it will be granted. So, right now, Lord, we ask in you to open our minds and our hearts. So that we can see what you have, receive what you have for us today, Lord God. So, Father God, we say thank you. And we praise you, God. And we just give you glory. And, Lord God, you are worthy. You are so worthy, Father. You are so worthy to be praised. So, Lord God, we do thank you. And we praise you. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. When I left the church, I guess a couple of weeks ago, I came out and I said, it's time to party. <laughs> and, and we partied on that Sunday. Now, I come back here and all of you all are sitting up here like wallflowers. <laughs> now, you know, we got to get the wallflowers off the wall, out of their chairs, and be ready to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 I got a song that I want you all to sing. It's a very easy song. It says, I come to praise the Lord, and I hope that I'm not alone. Right. You're going to do that three times. 
And then that's when the punchline comes in. Because it says, because it's like fire, fire, what? Shut up in my boat. I came to praise the Lord, and I hope that I'm not alone. I came to praise the Lord, and I hope that I'm not alone. I came to praise the Lord, and I hope that I'm not alone. Cause it's like fire, fire, to shut up in my bones. I came to praise the Lord, and I hope that I'm not alone. I came to praise the Lord, and I hope that I'm not alone. I came to praise the Lord, and I hope that I'm not. Cause it's like fire, fire, shut up in my bones. I said amazing grace, amen, how sweet the sound. Yeah, it saved the wretch like me. Do me like 
I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. I promised him that I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. Let's sing, church. I am the battlefield, Lord. Lord, and I promise I will serve him. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. I was a lone and idol. I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven say, there is work to do. I took the master's hand and I joined the Christian band. I'm on the battle. I am on. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise. My friends and kindred, I was bound for the promised land. The grace of God upon me had the Bible in my hand. Distant lands I tried, crying, sinner, come to God. I am on the battlefield. Oh.
Now when I met my Savior, I met him with a smile. He healed my wounded spirit, and he owned me as a child. Around the throne of grace, he appoints my soul a place. I am. Let's sing, church. I'm on the battlefield. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on. And I promise I will serve him. I'm on. Clap them hands. I am on. church. Our responsive reading will be coming from Isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 to 11 and I will read and you will read responsively. But now thus said the Lord who created you O Jacob and he who formed you O Israel. Fear not I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I made him. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let them bring out their witness that they may be justified or they may hear and say it is truth. Together, I am even, and beside me there is no savior. Spirit of the living God.
know that he will. How do you know he will? He'll fight your battles. If you just keep still, don't worry about it. He will. Jesus will. He'll fight my battles. If I just keep still, I know that he will. He'll fight my battles. If I just keep still, I know that he will. He'll fight my battles. Come on, somebody. I know that he will. He'll fight my battles. If I just keep still, I know that it will. like David. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yes. Yeah, do it. Good morning, New Jerusalem. Well, all our first time visitors, please stand. All our first time visitors. On behalf of Pastor Elijah Collins and First Lady Dr. Angeline Collins and New Jerusalem Baptist Church, you are welcome in this place. Just praise the Lord any way you see fit. And now in New Jerusalem, if you are welcome, my first time guests, the way you always do, thank you.
that it's gonna be Whoa. a lovely day. pray somebody was touched, somebody got, got a fist bump or something today. If they not say nothing to you, shame on them. Shame on them. You reach over right now and pop them in the back of the head. Don't do that. I'm playing. Don't do not. No violence in, in the church. But the Bible do say that, that, you know, taken by violence and violence taken by force, you know, stuff is violence, but you know. Amen. I'm glad to see everyone here today. We praise God. Now turn your attention to the video screen for our announcements. Amen. Good morning, New Jerusalem. Here are your announcements. Devotion with Pastor. Start your weekday mornings with a devotion with Pastor from 7 a.m. to 7.10 a.m. Call 347-514-7350. Prayer Ministry. New Jerusalem family, we have intercessory prayer every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Saturday mornings from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Shabbat will host a no school fun day to kick off fall break on Thursday, October 4th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The cost is $10 per child. Please see any of the Shabbat teachers to register your child. Click ministry discipleship classes starting Sunday, September 2nd at 8.45 a.m. Classes include General Sunday School, Study of the Book of Romans, Teen Classes, and Children Classes. For more information, see Reverend Anita Brinson. The Nurse Ministry will be checking blood pressures every fourth Sunday. The Nurse Ministry is asking for your help. Sign up for a committee to help with the Health Festival. 
Sign-up sheets are located at the health festival table in the lobby. It's that time of year again when we celebrate Pastor Elijah Collins and First Lady Dr. Angeline Collins. It's the 16th Pastoral Appreciation, held Sunday, September 30th at 10 a.m. We will celebrate our first family with music, solos, and dance. Join us immediately following service for dinner. We would like to give a monetary gift from the congregation. We are asking each individual to donate a total of $16 and couples to donate $32 for pastoral appreciation. All ministries to donate $256, which is $16 for each year of pastoring, teaching, and shepherding God's children. Please wear yellow and gray in any combination. For more information, please see Sister Carol Maxwell. NJBC family, let's show our college students some love. The Young Adult Ministry will be collecting donations to send campus care packages to our college students. We are in need of snacks, toiletries, grocery store gift cards, fast food gift cards, and monetary donations. Please stop by the Y'all Ministry table following service to register your campus living college student. For more information, see Reverend Isaac Chapman or Sister Jasmine Harvin. Attention New Jerusalem, come out for a day of fun and excitement that the whole family can enjoy. It's the NJBC Family Fun Day. Come out as we celebrate our first family in games, food, and prizes, Saturday, September 29th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Featuring bouncy houses, water tanks, face painting, and so much more. You don't want to miss this fun and exciting time. $5 for kids 5 and up. For more information, please see Deaconess Petway or Sister Carol Maxwell. New Jerusalem, join us in worship during our pastor's anniversary revival, commemorating 16 years of pastoral ministry, September 25th to the 27th, 7.30 p.m. nightly. You can now text to give your tithing, offering, or pay registration for any upcoming event. And those are your announcements. Have a blessed week. Scripture. I'm reading out of Luke chapter 6 and the 35th verse, and, it first, and 35th verse, and it says, But love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. God is a reciprocal God. That means that um, he first gives to us. And then it's our responsibility to give back. So as God is reciprocal, so we ought to be reciprocal. That means that we're supposed to give, knowing that we're going to give back. God gives to us. So as he gives to us, he's good to us. So because he's good to us, we give. Because he gives to us, we give. Because his word says that we are to give, we give. And he's clear. It's by the measure that you give that he gives it back to you. And so as you bring your offerings, as you bring your tithes, just remember God is good. He's good to us. And according to the way that he's created us, it's supposed to be natural. We're supposed to naturally give to God because he naturally gives to us. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you this morning, God, for an opportunity to give. God, we thank you for an opportunity, God, to be more like you. We thank you for an opportunity, God, to have a, a heart 
of love and a heart of kindness. And God, we pray, God, that you would just touch our hearts this morning and even help us to be better givers. Help us to be more kind. Help us to be patient. Help us to do, God, what you've called us to do. And God, we know because you are reciprocal, because you give and we give back, because we give to you, God, that you are going to give in abundance. You are going to give back into our bosoms to overflow. You're going to give back into this church to overflow. And God, we just believe it in faith, God, that as we do what you've called us to do, God, that you're going to do nothing less than what you said that you would do. And you're going to give it to us, press down, shaken together, overflowing in the name of Jesus. And so, God, we thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Follow the directions of your ushers and remember um, the brown basket is for um, our benevolent giving so that is for those that are less fortunate so as you come remember the less fortunate mm -hmm. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me, who are we to rob God? Cup runneth over when it's all God. Come on, press down, press down, running over. Press down, press down. Like you and me. Now who are we uh, to rob God? Cup runneth over. Cause it's all God's yeah, press down. Father God, we thank you, God, for this offering. God, we thank you and we present it back to you, God, with the expectation, oh God, that you're going to do what you said that you're going to do, God, that you are going to allow these offerings and these tithes to be pressed down into our bosom and to overflow into our household and to overflow into this kingdom, God. We're forever grateful to you, God, and we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
worship forever. We worship forever. We worship forever. Oh, we worship forever. We worship forever. We worship forever. Samuel, Hannah, God, the Bible tells us that God had closed up Hannah's womb, and the Bible lets us know that Hannah went to God, went to the temple, and she, she was praying, and she prayed to God that for a child, and after she prayed, the Bible says that she was moving her lips to a point where the, even the, the, she was praying to God to a point, but silently, that the priest thought that she had been drinking. And later on, she, she, that's how hard she was praying for a child because her womb was closed up. She couldn't have a child. She was barren. But God, after her prayer, honored her prayer. And so Hannah dedicated her son back to God when he was a child to serve in the church. And Hannah made said she she Hannah began to have a prayer of thanksgiving of how thankful she was to God and how she adored him and how powerful he was. And I want to read a little bit of Hannah's prayer. Because God granted her with that child. She said, my heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. 
I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like you, Lord, for there is none beside you, nor is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and those who stumble are girded with strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, and the hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren has borne seven, and she who has many children has become feeble. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princesses and make them inherit the throne of glory. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. It is God. It is God. Who gives, it is God who taketh away. It is God who is a giver of every good and perfect gift. There is none like him. In other words, Hannah is saying, the song they just sang. You can't love him forever if, 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 he's, if he's like everybody else. He's different. That, that's the, 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 the mate that you're sitting by now, or, or the one that you love, that it's something different about them that cause you to love them. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If he didn't love us first, we couldn't sing these songs, I love you forever. It's prayer time, church. Let's come give him honor where honor do. Let's come and pray for one another. Come to the altar. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Stand where you are if you're not going to come to the altar. If you're able-bodied, stand where you are if you're not coming to the altar. Is that anyone's testimony? Is that anyone's testimony? Everybody sing that song. I, I love you forever, oh Lord. Everybody, everybody, I love you. Eyes closed, eyes closed, everybody. You've been good to us. You brought us out of danger. You snatched us from the depths of hell. You've shown us mercy when no one else would. You've shown us favor. Some of our friends have died and gone on. Some of our loved ones have died and gone on. And they lived better lives than we did. They were better people uh, uh, in the sight of man than we were. But you chose to keep us. 
We are undeserving of your goodness. We treat our brothers and sisters wrong oftenly. But you still hold back what we truly deserve. When we was hurting, you stood by us when no one else would. When our lawyers couldn't do anything, you showed up. When our loved ones let us down, you've still been there. When we weeped and cried all night, we weren't comforted until you said, it's okay, son. It's okay, daughter. When we woke up some mornings and we're troubled in the heart, you cause a smile to come upon our face because you, only you have been good to us. You've walked with us. You've spoken to us when we drive in our cars. You've spoken to us in our rooms. You've spoken to us in our homes. You've told us it's going to be okay. You've blessed us when we didn't know where our help was going to come from. You helped us. When we were in need, when no one would give unto us, when we were in need, you made a way out of no way. You sent us wives. You sent us husbands. You sent us friends to speak to us and comfort us when we needed comforting. You've given us a church to come to, to hear a word, to be blessed, to get some comfort from, to escape this rude world, this cruel world. I love you forever. There's none like you. You sit high. You look low. You didn't forget about us when everybody else counted us out. You lifted us up. When we counted ourselves out, you lifted us up. When you, we, we deemed ourselves no good, when family deemed us no good. You looked down and you chose us and began to use us. There's none like you. You're merciful. You're good. You're kind. You're compassionate. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You've healed our bodies. You console our minds. You speak to us in the midnight hour. You give us peace when there's no peace.
Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. There's none like you. You're awesome. You're amazing. You said you'll supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. We have without nothing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for consoling us, God. Thank you for walking with us, God. Thank you for speaking to us, God. Thank you for comforting us, God. Thank you for loving us first, God. Thank you for choosing us, God. Thank you for the church, God. Thank you for your saints, God. We're not perfect, God. But you are God. And you're working on us daily, God. And so, God, we thank you for uh, 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 using us uh, 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 when no one else would use us, God. We bless you, God. God, we pray for our pastor this morning. We ask that you lift him, that you speak to him, that you continue to walk with him, that you begin, you continue to prick his heart, God, that you continue to uh, bless him, that you continue to speak to him. And we pray, God, that the word that come forth out of his mouth, Father God, strictly from you, God, that your people may be blessed, God, that the devil may be horrified, God, and that someone will come to you, God. God, we love you. Thank you. We love you forever. Thank you. There's none like you, Lord. We bless you. Thank you Lord. We honor you. We thank you. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Yes, Lord. Amen. About the name Jesus, something about the name Jesus, it is the sweetest name. Oh, how I know. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Sweet. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be Don't you want to prepare you today? Be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Lord, for you, my soul says yes. 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 prepare me. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary Lord for you if you would turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13 It's the first book of the New Testament. Should be easy to find. But if you cannot find it, you can go to your table of contents and you can look up the name Matthew. And there you will find it. If you still cannot find it on the table of contents, you can lean to your neighbor and ask them, can you help me find Matthew? And if you still cannot find it, I will pray for you. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. We begin reading at verse 24 through 30. 
And then we will skip down to verse 36 and read through verse 43. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads as thus. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? He then, how then does it? Have tears. He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us to then go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat within. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Let's skip down to verse 36. It reads, Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so will be in the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out all of the kingdom, all, to, all things that, off, that offend. And those who practice lawfulness and will cast them into the, fur, the, the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the son of the kingdom of their father. He Who has an ear, let him hear. Amen. Before you see, before you sit, I want to pray with you. My topic today is, why do bad things happen to good people? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. For this day, God, we thank you for your many blessings, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord God, for this time, oh God. Just to hear your word, Lord God. For God, all it takes is one word, oh God, that will change our life forever. So God, we're coming, oh God, just to hear a word from you, Lord God. I pray, God, that you decrease me, oh God, and that you might increase today, Lord God. So so God, that they hear none of me, oh God, and all of you, Lord God. Right now, God, we thank you, oh God, for your word, and we praise your name. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart Be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As you go to your seat, tell tell, somebody, why do bad things happen to good people? My brothers and my sisters, I'm sure you've often asked this question to yourself. I'm sure you've been through things in your life and, and and you wonder and you wonder and you wonder, why do bad things happen? To good people, to to good people, it's 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 mind boggling. It's mind boggling because we try our best and 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 and, and seeing you, you do the right, try and do the right thing, and, and and it seems like suddenly things begin to fall apart. They 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 you, you feel like that you got your eyes dotted and, you, and your T's crossed and all your Q's beside your U's, and, and and you assume that everything is gonna be all right, but just things begin to happen. In your life that you can't explain, and 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 and, and or, or you might be wondering why why did I have to grow up 
like that? Why do I have to grow up with, 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 without a mama? Or why do I grow up without a daddy? And, and, and you often wonder, why, 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 why didn't I have that type of life or that type of family? Why, why did I have to, to, to go through those struggles in my life just to get where I'm at today? And you often wonder, why did I have to go through that? But today we're going to learn in, in, in this text why? Why? Now, I'm sure you're wondering, you're looking, you're like, how in the world did he get that topic from this text about wheat and tares? Wheat and tares. Good things, bad things. We're, we're, let's, let's, let's walk our way through this. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. I'm glad you asked that because the scripture is going to talk about that. So in this scripture, in this text, we see Jesus. He's He's, 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 he's just preaching and teaching in chapter 12. He was in a house, and the house got full. So chapter 13, he decides, I'm going to go out of the house. I'm going go, to go out on the sea in a boat on a ship. And the multitude that, that was around listened to him preach and teach are on the seashore. And so he, he began chapter 13 by talking about the, the, the sowing of the sea, the sowing of the sea. Y'all, y'all remember the story. So he talks about that the, the sower, the sower, he, he sowed some seeds, and some of the seeds fell on the wayside, fell on the wayside, and some of the seeds, they fell on stony ground, and, and then some of the seeds, they fell, they fell on, 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 on a bunch of thorns, and the thorns, and then some of the seeds fell on the good ground, and then he goes to explain this parable, goes to explain this parable. He, he talks about that, that, that the seeds that fell on, on the wayside, those seeds were eaten up by the birds, and that's, that's like a Christian who, 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 who the word got on them, but they didn't receive the word, and so it was taken and it was stolen from them by the enemy. Then he, then he begins to talk about the seeds that fell on the stony ground. The stony ground Christians, th- those are the ones who, who got the word, got it real quickly on Sunday morning, and they went out talking about Jesus and said, thank you, Jesus, for the seed that you gave me, all the good words you gave me, I, and they ran with it, and they ran with it, but and then it took root just, just barely on the stony ground. And then when the sun came down, when the problems happened, and the problems came up the world, then that, 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 that seed withered away and it died. Then he talks about the, 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 the seed that fell in the thorns. It began to grow, but, the, but as, 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 as they got around their friends who wasn't saved yet, and they got around people who talked about Jesus, and they, they didn't they believe that of what was being said, that that, that, that seed and that, 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 that plant that grew was choked out. It was choked. Didn't grow anymore and it died. Then he talked about the seed that fell on the good ground. The good ground. You know the good ground. The good ground is when you, when you, when you, when you come into the church and you, you come in just for one word. You're not, you're not coming to see what anybody got on. You're not coming to see what, what, what nobody said or, or, who, or who's coming in or who, who you didn't know or any guests who's coming to you. You're coming to hear a word. That Christian, that Christian, where, 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 when, the, when the word hits them, they, they, they take it, they receive it. They take it on the inside, and it grows, and, and it matures, and, and the root system gets deep inside of them, and they begin to worship, and they begin to praise, and they begin to come to Bible study on Wednesday nights. That seed that, 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 that grows on the inside of them, that's good ground, that good ground seed. So he, so he explained this, this parable, this parable to to, 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 to the people, to the disciples. And, and then he moves on. He talks about the parables and why he talks in parables. And then he moves on to this parable about the wheat and the tear. The wheat and the, and the tear. It, I love the way Jesus teaches because he uses parables. He, well, let's, let's start. He, he, he says at the beginning of, of, this, of this text, he says, Another parable he puts forth to the people, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like. Let's stop there. Jesus speaks to us in in parables because he wants us to understand kingdom business. The simple definition of a parable is a, a, a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Now, 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 if, if Jesus begins to te- teach us in his language, then we're going to be confused and, and, and bewildered. So Jesus teaches us in 
parables. So he, he uses he uses the term, he uses the term the kingdom of heaven is like. So it, it, what he does is he uses something that we understand to teach us something that only he understands. He he sort of breaks it down for us in bite-sized pieces. Now, I teach sixth grade science in middle, in middle school. And I sort of understand what he's doing now because when I taught high school, I could just give them a topic and say, hey, this is what it is. Read it. Do it. Now I got to spoon feed because the things that I'm trying to teach them, they might not understand if I talk in too big of words. I'm going somewhere. So Jesus uses parables to teach us the things that he wants us to know that we can go out and apply them to our lives. So, 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 so he's, he says the kingdom of heaven is like a man that sows good seed in his field. Now, the reason why he uses sowing and, and, and agriculture in, in, his, in his, this parable is because those are the things that those people back in Palestine knew about in this day. They knew about, they knew about the sowing and the reaping. They understood that if I sow good, if I sow seed into a ground, I should reap a harvest in the end. They understand that. They understand that if I take this seed that I've got, that I've traded for, and I, and I dig up my ground, and I put the seed in my ground, that in the end, when I've watered it, and, 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 and I've, I've put fertilizer on it, and I've done all I had to do with it, that it's going to grow into a field of what I planted. So he says that the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, his field. Now, 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 now see, in this parable, in this parable, Jesus, it, normally Jesus doesn't explain parables. Normally what he do is he'll throw it out there and, you, and, and then you got to pray on it and you got to explain it for yourself. But he was generous this time and he said, you know what, I'm going to explain it to you right over here. So he takes, he takes the good seed. So now, 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 now the way, the way, the way this, this, this parable is put together, he says, now, the man who sowed the seed is, is, is Jesus. Now, this is good seed. The seed Jesus sowed is good seed. It's good seed. It's good seed. It's good seed. And he sowed it in his own field. Now, now, now explain, explain the field is the world. So he sowed good seed, me and you, in the world. He sowed the good seed. In the world, but as we slept, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy sowed tears. He threw out tears, put tears. Now notice, now notice, now notice, the owner planted good seed. Good seed in his field. And then the devil came along and sowed tares. He planted Good seed in his field, in this world, that he made. Then the enemy came along, and he sowed tares. Now, notice the story. Notice the story. Jesus is talking about himself sowing the good seed. Now, when he sowed the seed, he sowed, sowed the seed, sowed us into to this, this, to, to this world. And so, let's talk about Satan. Satan Satan's job is to... Kill, steal, and destroy. Satan knows that the seed he sowed in the world was good seed. Satan understands I can't do anything about this seed that he sowed, but I can distract the seed that he sowed. I can't attempt to destroy the seed that he sowed, so that's my plan to do is, is to attempt to destroy the seed that is so. Now, this could be confusion to you because it's like, 
Why am I dealing with these things? It's like, it's like we're caught up in the middle of something that we knew nothing about. It all began, it all began in heaven a long time ago. Satan, known as Lucifer, thought he was big and bad. He was the worship leader. He was the worship leader. Lucifer, the worship leader, but he, but he got the big head and got kicked out. So, so now, kicked out to hell, so now he's now called Satan. Now called Satan. So now we're caught up in the middle of something that's between God and Satan. We're in the middle of a war and didn't even know it. So why do we wonder why bad things happen to good people? We're in the middle of a war. There's a war going on between God and Satan. And we're just caught up in the middle of it. Satan is mad at God because we took, a, because we took his place. He was up there being the worship leader. And then now his point, now what we're trying to do now is, 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 is make us be ashamed. Try, try, trying to put the blame on us. He said, look at what, what they're doing. Why would you have them do, be the worship leaders for you? So we're looking at the seed that he planted in the good ground. So now, now as we're looking at this, as, we, as we're looking at this, as we're looking at this, he says that as we slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. Satan's never going to come to you up in your face. Satan always sneaks in the back door. Always sneaks in unaware. Because he knows that he knows that all we got to do is call on the Lord, and he'll fight our battles. So he has to sneak in the back door to do anything, do, any, do we have any tactics or, 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 or any schemes that he has to put on us. And so, so Satan sneaks in the back door and sows tears, bad things among the wheat. But, 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 but when the grain sprouts up and a crop produces a crop, the tares will appear. Let's talk about the tares. Let's talk about the tares. Physically, a tear is very similar to wheat. Very similar to wheat. Sounds like sin. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes in your mind you think I'm doing the right thing. That might be a tear. A tear has a lot of the physical attributes of the wheat. But, when, but, but as the tear grows, it becomes different than the wheat. The wheat is heavy and it droops. But the tear stands up straight and is poisonous. Just like sin. Sometimes... We think we, that, that, that we, 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 got, we got all, we, we do one little thing and, and it's, it's growing, it seems like it's going pretty good. But eventually, that, that sin, that the small sin will sprout up and it'll be look different than, than the wheat in your life. So, he sowed tares among the wheat. But when the grain has sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appear. The tears also appear. Now, let's discuss. Come here, Job. Let's talk. Let's talk about Job. Let's talk about Job. Job was minding his own business, hanging out at his house, chilling out, no problems going on. Had his wife and kids, and everything was his animals and stuff. And then all of a sudden, the tears came through. Because there, there was a meeting that he had no, no idea about. There was a meeting in heaven. When God and all the angels came together, and so did Satan. He asked Satan, what are you doing? Seeking to and fro who I may devour. 
And he said, have you considered my servant, Job, a war? We in a war, y'all. We in a war. He, have you considered my servant, Job? Maybe you today. Have you considered my servant, Bo? Have you considered my servant, Tony Petway? Have you considered? A good question is, are, are you considered? That's, that, that's a good question. Are you considered? But we're in a war, and we didn't even know. But then Satan said, I, I can't get to Job because you built a hedge around him. You built a hedge around him, a hedge around, hedge around him. But actually, he's built two hedges around him. One around his physical, and then one around his spiritual. Because God said, you know what? Tell you what, I, I'll take down one hedge. But you can't touch his life or his soul. I, I got that. That's mine. But you can touch his body. So we're in a war, people. But the Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Or against principalities and powers, or against the rulers of the darkness of this age. But all we got to do is stand, be still, and God will fight your battles. Now, 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 he, he sowed tares with the wheat. So tares. With the wheat. And so, and so, and when, 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 when this happened, the servants, the servants, the church folk came to him. He said, they said, sir, they're trying to question God. Didn't you? Now, I saw you. Didn't you sow good seed in the ground? Look like it's all messed up now, see? But didn't you serve good, didn't you sow good seed in, in, in the ground and, and it was in, in your field? So if you did that, now how do we have tears? I thought you were doing the right thing. You know, church folk do sometimes. Church folk do sometimes, you know. Be questioning stuff. I thought you was going to help me. I thought you were going to save me one day. I thought you was going to get me a new car. I thought you sowed good seed in the field. But now I see tears. Why does bad stuff happen to me? I praise your name every day. I pray three times a day. I prayed in the morning, I prayed in the noon, I prayed in the evening time. So why is this bad stuff happening to me? Why I got to deal with all, all these stresses and, and trials and tribulations? Why? Then, then, then they said, then they said, since the terrors are there, he said, they said to him, should we go out and pluck it up? But then he says, but then Jesus says, an enemy has done this. Enemy, enemy has done this because he knows the seed that he, he planted was his seed and it was good seed and he planted good seed in the ground. Now, now Satan understood that he can't do anything with that seed. He knew the seed was good. All he could do was trouble the seed. All he could do was, 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 was distract the seed. All he could do was, was plant the tares in the ground, in the ground. So they said, they said, they said, should we go gather him up? Jesus says, no. No. Lest you gather up the tares and uproot the wheat also. Let's, let's think about Paul. Paul asked Jesus something too. About the thorn inside. He said, he prayed three times. He said, no, my grace is sufficient. For when you're weak, I'm strong. When you're weak, I'm strong. Even Paul's thorn couldn't be removed. That's why they couldn't remove the tears because they had a, so he said, let them, let them grow together. Now that's confusing. Why would you allow 
the tares to grow with the wheat? Why would you allow the bad things to happen to the good people? Why would you allow the bad seed to happen with the good seed? Why would you allow, why would you allow calamity to come to your good people? Why would you allow stress to, 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 to bog down your people? Why? 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 Why would you do that? Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you got to pray and leave it alone. Because sometimes, sometimes the tears that are entangled in your life were allowed to happen to make you who you are today. Sometimes the tears that you, that you have to deal with, the, the evil things, the bad things you have to deal with, made you what God wants you to be. If God would have put you in, in, in the best house with the best family, you may have turned out, you may have praised him the way you praise him now. You may have been doing things that you can do now. It's all because of the tears. The tears can sometimes make you better. So he said, let them, let them grow together. Let, let them grow together. Let, let them be together. Let, 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 them, let them hang out together. Just maybe, maybe your testimony might turn a tear around. You know, that there are physical tears and there are people tears too. Because remember in the story it said, the parable is said that the tares were sown by the evil one. Now, now he could have sown distress, but he could have sown people too. People to, to come distract you and mess you up. But just maybe, just maybe, just maybe that, that your testimony, your, the life you live might, might, might turn a tear around. So just think about it. If he tore the tear out and threw that tear away, then that tear may not have a chance to, to, to come and know Jesus. For himself. So he said, let them grow together to the harvest. To the harvest. What's the harvest? The harvest. That's, that's the end time. That's when he comes back. You know, we, we, we as Christians try, try to solve things ourselves. We figure, I, I know better. I, I'll pull it on out. We'll, we'll rush and try to fix it. Try to fix the problem ourselves. But if God meant for it to be fixed, he would have fixed it himself already. Sometimes God allows the tear to grow so you can grow. Because you have to understand that the tears aren't meant to kill you. They were only meant to distract you. They were, they, were, they were only meant, they were only meant to, 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 to take you off course. And God allowed it so that you could start praying more. God allowed it so you could be more humble. God allowed it so you would praise him. So why the tears? Why the tears? Why the tears? Because God cares about you. Because you're valuable. Think about this. If, 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 if. You weren't valuable. Satan wouldn't bother you. There's value in the wheat. That's why he sold it. That's why people back in that day sold wheat because they, they took the wheat and they sold the wheat. So they could trade the wheat. That was their money system. And there was value in the wheat. The only reason God is, I mean, the only reason Satan is messing with you is because you're valuable. You're valuable. I know I'm not shouting. I'm not saying to shout on sermon today. But I want you to get, I want you, I want you to understand that you're valuable. Just because bad things happen to you don't take away from the fact that you're valuable. They're happening because you're valuable. Because Satan knows God got a plan. And if he can get in and distract you and take you off course and mess you up and, and think you're not valuable, then you won't shine like God meant for you to shine. So, God, 
Jesus sowed good seed in his field. So good seed in his field. Then the enemy came and sowed tears. Evil things. Sowed it amongst the wheat. But instead of God telling the servants to pluck it out, he said, let it grow together. That, that's, that's sticking with me. Because it confused me at first. It's like, why would you let it grow together? Now, 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 now about agriculture, when, when the wheat grows with the tear, the, the, the roots entangle together. They entangle together. So when you look at this, when, when, when you look at this, sometimes our sin entangles us. But God, but God, the seed that God planted, that didn't change. It's just some of that sin entangled against the roots. Imagine if God pulled the tares. He would uproot the wheat also. He would uproot you also. But he allowed you to grow despite your sin that has entangled you. So he said, let it grow together. Let it grow together. I know you've done some bad stuff, but let it grow together. I, I, know, I, I, I know you've been smoking some stuff, but let it grow. Let it grow together. I know you've been with that girl and 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 that girl, but let it grow. Let it grow together. I know you've been lying and cheating, but let it grow. Together. I, 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 I know you was clubbing last night and came to church this morning, but let it grow. Let it grow together. Because he planted good seed in you. He planted good seed in you. He planted good seed in you. But the enemy came and he sowed a tear. But don't pull the tear out. Let it grow together let it grow let it let, 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 let it grow let it grow together let it grow together sometimes the, the, the tears will make you stronger wheat sometimes the tears even even though it's bad that it'll make you better in this life in this life we, we there, there, will, there will be tears but those but those things in life that try to trip you up and take you off your course. But I, I know a man who came to give us life and died and rose to give us more abundant life. His name is Jesus. That even though we have tears, we still can grow. Even though we have hard times, even though we can't understand it and we don't know why, we still got Jesus. Because the Bible says in the end days, he'll do the separating. We can't do the separating. We'll mess it all up. But he going to do the separating. He'll, he'll, he'll fix it. He'll, 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 he'll untangle it. He'll pull it apart in the end days. If you would stand with us this morning, I, I'm done. I'm done. Praise God. <laughs> Jesus came to give us life. And give us life more abundantly. He didn't come to destroy us. He came to give us life. He figured if I can if, 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 I, if I can just give them life, they'll praise me. He figured if I can just give them a chance, they'll praise me. But he has to allow the things to come. Because if, if God never allows sickness to come, how would we know he, he could be a healer? If God never allowed bad things to happen, how can you know we could, he could turn it around? If God never allowed negative, negative bank accounts, how do we know that he could be a provider? 
If God didn't allow it, how would he, we know that he could do it? Because he's able. He's able. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why would he let the tears grow with the wheat? It was necessary. It was necessary. It was necessary that you, you came up in the house you came up in. Necessary that you had the children you had. Necessary that, 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 that your parents were the parents you had. It was necessary. I know it hurts sometimes that, that you deal with things in your life, but it was necessary. It made you who you are today. I know it hurts right now. People going through things that you don't understand. And you wonder why me. But it was necessary. It was necessary. You may never understand why it happened that way. But just know today that it was necessary. If God had not allowed that to happen, you couldn't have what you have today. If God gave you everything you ever wanted, you wouldn't know that he could work it out for you. It was necessary. church are open. If there be one today who is wondering why these bad things are happening to me, just know that it's necessary. But today, accept Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 9 that if thou wilt confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. It's easy to say, I believe in him. You can say that, and it looks good on the surface. But the next part, it says, believe in your heart. There's two parts to this. Say it with your mouth, then believe it in your heart. church home I recommend New Jerusalem is the best church on this side of heaven you need a covering you need a covering the same way you need an umbrella when it's raining outside you need a church home to cover you that prays for you and when you're stressed out you can call on them
may be seated. Sister, he will give new life. Christ. God for the word. Amen, 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 amen. I know y'all want to hear somebody shouting today. I'm sorry. Y'all forgive me. I, I didn't have a shout in me today. But I had a word in me today. I just pray you were blessed today. I pray that somebody received something today. Something to chew on, you know. You know how, how a cow is in, 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 in the field and he chewing on something all the time. That curve, just chewing on something. So just had something to chew on this week. So if you're ever wondering why it happened, it's necessary. It's gonna make you better. It's gonna make you better. It's gonna make you better. Pastor did want me. He did want me to say this day. He want me to say he want me to let you guys know about the, the uh, family fun day and. And also the taste of New Jerusalem, that's going to be next, next Saturday. Next Saturday, next Saturday, that's going to be, there will be jumpy for the kids. And uh, brother, brother, brother Fly Ty back there is going to be, going to be uh, rocking the turntables for us. Rocking the turntables with, with, with the, the funky beat. Amen, amen. I got a funky beat. Got some food. Uh, there will be food tables set up so you can enjoy the different, different uh, menu, the different cuisines that we have out there. Uh, also, the highlight of the day will be the water challenge. Water challenge. Reverend T coming back. Reverend T coming back. We dump some water on him. Amen. 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 He's coming back. The cost will be five dollars. Five dollars, and the proceeds will go towards the monetary gift for first family. For the first family, um, be next Sunday. We celebrate uh, passing the family anniversary. Uh, don't 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 forget don't forget that we'll be asked to donate sixteen dollars per individual, thirty two per couple, and each ministry is asked to give two sixty five. That is six sixteen dollars for each year that Pastor has been pastoring in New Jerusalem Baptist Church. Amen. 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 If all hearts and minds are clear. Oh, revival, revival next week too. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, right? Excuse, I'm sorry. See, I messed that up. My bad. My bad. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Y'all come on now. Y'all come on support now. I, I've been revivals now, and 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 it'd it be about ten of us and 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 fifty, sixty of them. So l let's turn it around. Let's make it more of us than it is of them. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. It's our church. It's our revival. Let's show up for our own revival. Can y'all do that? I expect to see y'all on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Come on, y'all. Let's do that, y'all. Let's do that, y'all. If all have minds clearly, let's, let's go home. Let's go home. Everybody say...
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, God. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings, your grace, your mercy, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us today. We thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you, Lord, as you've blessed us, oh God, that you've given us a word in our hearts to go through the week, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for for our, our church, oh God, our church family, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that that for, 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 for their life, oh God. We, we, we thank you, Father God, for the wheat and we thank you for the tear, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for the good times and the bad times. We thank you, Father God, that, that you're still on the throne, Lord God, and that you're working it out for our good. God, we love you so much, oh God. We love you so much, oh God. We thank you right now. Now I want to him who was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh within us in Jesus name amen amen amen